Hello, friends. Wow, it has been an age uh, since we last saw each other. It's been like 6,000 years. A whole fake creationist history has passed since I last made a video. The U.S. government has shot down like 26 UFOs, but it's good to be back. It's going to be kind of a weird one. You're going to be like... Why the fuck has he been gone this long and now he's he's making a holster video? But this is something I am very passionate about. Today we are looking at the Galco Miami Classic 2 shoulder holster. I love this damn thing. And so I wanted to talk to you about something that I love for my first video back. The Galco Miami Classic 2 seems ridiculous on the surface, right? You know, generally as a community and an industry, we've collectively decided that once we move past a concealed carry era and onto new holsters, techniques, and placements, you know, we don't revisit them and we tend to view those older things as more or less worthless. Though many things in the gun community are cyclical, this doesn't seem to be one of those things, at least to any sort of, you know, meaningful degree. When we do try old techniques and holster placements, we generally do it sort of as like a, you know, cosplay for the almighty uh, Graham, but there may be some wisdom to past carry methods. A few years ago, I became hopelessly infatuated with small blowback pistols, and that led me down a whole rabbit hole of tiny pocket autos and how they were carried day to day in the past. In the end, I found that for me, a small blowback auto in a caliber like 32 was often the right option. Scoff if you want, but you know, I value comfort and ease. What you gonna do? I had long known that leather is also more comfortable, even with a modern polymer auto. Of course, in an ideal world, we would all carry a Glock 19 with a light on it with a spare mag and the coolest Kydex appendix holster that has some kind of cool carbon fiber texturing on it. Yeah, you know, of course, the Glock is frankly a better gun with far more firepower than like a, you know, fucking Beretta Tomcat. This holster is far more robust than this leather one in a lot of ways. Leather in the South requires actual care and attention, especially in the summer, barring it getting uh, too hot in the car and warping or something, the Kydex really can't be killed, right? Leather is still very sturdy, don't get me wrong, but it can get loose, it can get too dry, it can get too wet, you see my point? I still prefer leather, but you know, shit can happen to it. And cue all the, uh, you know, the older guys jumping in the comments to say they've never once maintained any of their leather holsters and they're doing fine. Well, congratulations, other people have had a different experience, especially in the South. Um, so, you know, I was spending more time with the tiny guns, the air weights, tiny autos, and buying more and more leather for my larger guns. I was becoming a real, a real leather daddy, if you catch my drift. You know, it was time to go full Sonny Crockett, I think, and live out my 1980s TV shooty man dreams. At the time Miami Vice was on TV, our friend Sonny was using cutting-edge guns of the time, at least based on the American shooting doctrine of the period. So I wanted to get a shoulder holster fitted for a modern polymer gun to see if the concept holds up. The Galco Miami Classic 2 for my beloved HK P30 seemed like the way to go. Is the P30 the newest, coolest thing on the market? No, it's, it's not. But... It is a marvelous polymer DASA auto of reasonable size and weight. Mine has also been very, very reliable. Generally, Galco makes my favorite leather holsters. Are there better, fancier holsters? Yeah, 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 there are. There are so many craftspersons making beautiful leather holsters in early 2023. But Galco, uh, they make an outstanding product that is very durable without too many aesthetic thrills. You know what you're getting and you know it'll be consistent. I've never gotten a bad one. The fit is always excellent and with maintenance, they hold up for years. I have a Galco holster from the mid 70s made about a decade before I was born that still fits and works great. This is one of those brands where you really can't go wrong. The work is always solid. Yeah, they occasionally have a sloppy stitch here and there. And I've gotten holsters that look a little scratched right out of the box once or twice. But it's not really a roll of the dice. It's going to work very well as a, a functional holster. Ordering leather elsewhere, I've gotten holsters that were clearly for a similar model of gun. And they just kind of shrugged and shipped it out. This seems to be uh, what a lot of makers do with leather for the Beretta 92s. I've gotten custom holsters that were so loose the gun could fall out if you gently tipped the holster upside down. I've had some with, uh, you know, suspicious trigger guard intrusions. The list goes on. Uh, for every three expensive custom holsters you get that are true works of art, and many of them are, you, you know, you get something that's a little, little rough. So Galco is charging high prices for a big maker. A lot higher than most of the big makers. But again, I love that consistency. That matters to me. 
However, once you find a really great custom maker, you hang on. And by the way, if you're looking for an alternative, Diamond D Leather makes really great stuff. I'm a big fan. And hilariously, sometimes they're cheaper than Galco, despite being a bit more custom in, in big quotes. So some shoulder holster history. You know, I have to give you some long masturbatory background on what they are and where they come from. It's why you're here. That and, you know, maybe the, the horses, I guess. As with so much gun lore, when you go to research holster history, almost no one cites their sources. They make historical claims that are often based on other dubious claims that were made on a gun forum. You know, in the Old West, they used to, oh, oh, did they? Did they? What, what era of the Old West? Where? Do you have any photos, artifacts, books, firsthand accounts that you can point to? No? Okay, yeah, you, you never fucking do. Uh, just a little side rant that really bugs me. Anyway, it seems that shoulder holsters started to appear after the Civil War. If you have any recommended reading on the history of holsters, please let me know. I'm, I'm very serious about that. This is a topic I'm interested in. As far as I can tell, it seems like shoulder holsters evolved from chest holsters, as folks sought to conceal guns when in towns and other areas where it might not be socially acceptable or legal to be seen packing heat. And it makes sense. A shoulder rig is a great way to carry a heavy gun out of sight. These uh, dubious articles with no citations always mention saddle holsters, and I can only imagine that the authors, like myself, just long for a simpler time where human, horse, gun, and leather came together to form one sweaty kind of dangerous being, like a dirty, unwashed centaur on the run from the authorities. What a, what a union it was. That's a more perfect union right there. It was a, a simpler time, a dirtier time. A grander time when man and equine majesty were free to live as they saw fit, to love as they saw fit. How long have I been? How long have I been talking? The popularity of the shoulder holster grew in the 20th century, and it became a popular option for anyone seeking to conceal a firearm. The popularity of this carry option seems to have begun to wane in the late 1980s as guns got lighter and other holster options got better. For the last two or three decades, we've lived in the age of the plastic holster and the plastic handgun. Both have only continued to get better. But I think the shoulder holster still has a place. For some people, in some circumstances. I feel like I say that a lot in videos. It's almost like different people need different things. But before we talk about all that, let's look at the Miami Classic 2 in detail. Features. The Miami Classic 2 and nearly all the Galco shoulder holsters are, as far as I know, modular. You can swap the straps with a couple of different width and color options in the same way that you can swap out just the holster or the mag carrier or both. You can see that there. It's just held on with, with buckles, right? You can also do away with either and add this uh, suspender belt connector thingy instead to keep tension. Though uh, I think that only makes sense, you know, for the mag carry, unless you just want to have, you know, mags and no gun, I guess. You, you, you do what you want, you know, who am I to judge, but that'd be, that'd be pretty weird. There are also straps that connect either the holster or the ammo carrier to your belt. Uh, to keep the harness from moving around when you draw and grab a fresh mag. That's what this thingy is for right there, that little hole. Um, how essential that is is going to depend on how you like to wear the harness, your body type, and how you draw. You're going to have to experiment. I personally don't require that at all. Uh, I wear this thing fairly tight and high up, so I don't have any issues with it moving around. But, you know, just, just experiment. The Classic 2 has a horizontal draw for both the mags and the gun. That feels best to me, but the classic model has uh, vertical mags if you want to do it that way. It's just personal preference. There's also a system that has a vertical handgun draw as well. The Jackass rig is interesting because you can have the gun horizontal or you can adjust it to a sort of downward diagonal. And with the modularity, you can just kind of mix, mix and match and experiment as you uh, see fit. And if you're a revolver person, there are a lot of wheel gun options for these configurations with speed loader pouches replacing the mag carrier. It's very good stuff. The straps are an inch and a half wide, very comfortable in my opinion, and there's a lot of adjustability here. The hardware is plastic pretty much all the way around. You know, the hardware is probably the weak point in the system in terms of strength, but metal hardware could be cold, heavier, and it would dig into your skin. Plastic is probably the right call, I think, after having had this for a while. I think that's the way to go. This holster fits up to a 56-inch chest. If you're a smaller person, you may have a lot of excess strap, as I do. Um, I'm 5'9", there's a lot of excess strap, but you can always cut that. 
Speaking of sizing, let's talk about how to configure the holster to fit your physical human form. When you first get a leather holster, a lot of folks will talk about needing to break it in to make it soft. Oh, what the hell are we talking about right now? A lot of folks don't like when new holsters are hard and stiff. Oof. They want to be able to slip in and out easily. And while I understand that they think that would feel nice, you also don't want to break it in so hard that it gets loose the more you stick it in. So make sure you actually need to do this. Galco recommends wrapping the gun in a plastic bag, a sort of, you know, prophylactic to keep the holstering situation safe, I suppose. Then you holster the gun with it in the prophylactic bag, and then you're supposed to leave the gun this way overnight. The tiny bit of extra size given to the gun by the plastic bag is enough to loosen the holster a bit. This works well, and it isn't enough of a dimensional change to sort of stretch the holster too much, but you can accomplish the same thing just by using the holster normally. The, the draw would be just a little stiff at first. It's really not a big deal. As long as the holster is made correctly, it's just going to loosen up on its own. And pretty damn fast too and if you do break it in don't go crazy just follow galco's advice you size the holster by adjusting the straps of course finding the right fit is going to take more time than you might imagine unless you're very familiar with shoulder holsters and your own preferences as to where the gun and mags should sit do you want them high under your arm at a slight angle totally horizontal uh stiff or with some give i'd recommend trying all these options to see what you actually like. Personally, I found that I like the gun and mags to be more or less perfectly horizontal with the harness relatively tight. I also sought the advice of a very experienced friend who worked in law enforcement for decades and wore one of these in Miami in the 80s. I don't think one is likely to find a better information source, frankly. When you look at the straps, they pass through a normal two-loop buckle with a third loop, the stop, on the bottom. When you size the harness initially, just use the top two loops and ignore the stop for now. If you use the stop loop on the bottom, it's just going to take longer to size the damn thing. You can size it roughly in the mirror or solicit assistance from a friend, acquaintance, passerby, spouse, uh, mistress, manstress, horse, or, or paid companion, whatever works for you. The straps are tight in the loops as we would want them to be. So even ignoring the bottom loop, I personally had to take the harness off each time to size it. Once you roughly know how you want it to feel, put the unloaded gun and magazine in the rig and see how it fits. Again, with an unloaded gun, obviously, check your draw strokes for both the gun and the magazines. Also, check and see where the plastic back hardware piece uh, thingy, where the four straps kind of come together. Check and see where that sits on your back. Make sure you like where it is. Once everything is to your liking, take off the harness, remove the gun and magazines, and find these little black plastic uh, keeper thingies that came, that came with the holster. Mine came with uh, five, I think, so four and a spare. Pull the straps through the bottom loops and note which hole in the main strap the bottom strap is nearest, if that makes sense. It's a lot easier for me to just show you. Pop the keeper thingy in the main strap with the largest end on top. The smaller end should be poking under the strap. The smaller bottom strap's nearest hole goes over the keeper thingy and that locks it down so you don't have, you know, flappy excess strap everywhere. That wouldn't be any good, would it? If you still have extra strap, as I do, even with the keepers, you can eventually cut off the excess if you've worn the setup for a while and you know there's absolutely no way you're ever going to need that space. Just just be careful. Don't be don't be hasty. Performance. After you get used to how different a shoulder holster feels, you will notice how much better the weight is distributed than something like uh, inside the waistband carry or inside the waistband appendix. The P30 isn't huge and heavy, but it for damn sure isn't a pocket pistol or a snubby revolver. This is a full-size pistol with a 17-round magazine. I guess, you know, the front end's a little bit shorter than some full sizes, but you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, if you close your eyes and you're wearing it in a shoulder holster, you would never guess how big the damn thing is. And I think if you're accustomed to wearing plate carriers and chest rigs, things like that, you're going to be even more impressed. You're already used to feeling weight on your shoulders, but this is nothing. The comfort is fantastic. You'll wonder why it took you so long to, to buy this, this setup. I personally hate wearing belts, and I just don't. I'm not going to do it. This is a great alternative. You, you, you still look like you. You don't have to build your whole life and wardrobe and style around carrying your gun. You hear folks talk about how carrying isn't easy and you should just buy the grandpa jeans and deal with the discomfort, you know, uh, both aesthetic and physical because of your duty to something or whatever. And I'm sorry, I, I, I fucking fell asleep. What, what, what were you saying again? You, you do whatever you want, but I'm here to live my damn life and dress how I want to dress. A comfortable option like this 
really helps. Mostly, <laughs> and the shoulder holster assumes you're wearing a jacket. That's the that's the big con here. You know, you were probably wondering when I was going to get to that, and that's the that's the big con. And uh, it also assumes that there is room in that jacket for a gun and two magazines. So keep that in mind. You can also wear a loose shirt over it with an undershirt. That's something that was popular in the 80s, if Miami Vice is to be believed. I've been told by someone who was there that this was popular and worked well. So that's another option. You can also use the shoulder holster in places where you can, of course, freely open carry and you need to comfortably wear a gun for many hours. But wintertime jacket concealment is really where this shines. If you have a jacket that slips over it, you would be hard pressed to find something more comfortable. At least that's how I feel about it. With a big winter coat, you'll forget you're even wearing the harness. A far cry from folks telling you to deal with plastic and metal. You have stuff down the front of your crotch because self-defense is suffering and it's your duty to suffer or whatever bullshit they like to say it doesn't get much better than this and with a smaller gun it would be even easier imagine pairing this with a small revolver or a glock 26 or a p365 or whatever else i wanted to try the p30 as a test of the concept but it would work even better with something more suited to edc i wanted to start with something large and then go down from there this is kind of the worst it can be and this is very comfortable so you still have to make sure the coat fits and that the harness is sized correctly. If the jacket is too tight or the holster is at a weird angle or too low, it'll be quite obvious. Just choose the right gun for your size and style if you plan to carry this way. But if you can make it work, my God, it's it's the most comfortable thing around. I don't need to give you a final thoughts to wrap this one up. It's easy as I explore carry options from the past. I continue to be impressed at how useful many of these older and supposedly outdated ideas are. Shoulder holsters are criminally underrated, and if you have the spare cash and curiosity, give it a shot. I can't promise that you'll like it as much as I do or that it'll work with your wardrobe or lifestyle, but there's a good chance that you'll be pleasantly surprised. You might even love it. Thanks for watching. Good night, and I will talk to you soon.